Do you get lost in negative thoughts at the moment? And do these thoughts trigger heavy emotions such as anxiety, powerlessness, or even depressive feelings and states, panicky feelings? Then this episode today might help you a lot. Welcome to today's episode. My name is Robert. I'm a highly sensitive person. And today I want to talk with you in this longer and deep diving episode format here on the podcast about unmasking negative thoughts. We go into the understanding and resolving of negative thought patterns. And I put in my experience from the past years where I was constantly writing, I was constantly reflecting and really deep diving into negative thoughts, also resolving them and working to implement more positive thoughts instead. But first of all, I want to make clear that we all have negative thoughts from time to time and that's absolutely normal as human beings. Today we talk about how to catch yourself in times where you experience negative thinking. I want to show you how thought patterns actually work, negative thought patterns as well as positive thought patterns. And in the end, we also discuss, and that's really interesting, practical techniques to stop negative thought patterns. So definitely keep listening to the end so you won't miss any practical tips and advice here on the topic. I think we all experience that from time to time that we start thinking about something which is probably not favorable for us. For example, it could be anything. Let's say you often, and I know that many people face this challenge, you often think that your partner for some reason might leave you or might cheat on you. So at the slightest sign, you would overinterpret that your partner maybe would leave you and your thoughts start this loop. What if he or she will leave me? What if he or she will cheat on me. Could be the other way around as well, that you experience thoughts like, when I'm with my partner, I can never be myself again. So I kind of trapped in that relationship, which is also not helpful. And the thought loop begins. Could be anything else as well. Some people experience negative thinking about dying at some point. They think like, well, what if I die at some point? What if this life will come to an end pretty soon? Or experience difficult thoughts at work? What happens if my boss will fire me? What happens if I will lose my job? Then I will be homeless. Then I won't have any money. Then there is no future. And all of these thought patterns come together to catastrophizing the future. In the end negative thoughts give us a quite unrealistic image of the future that are actually not reality. I guess we all experience this kind of irrational thinking from time to time. And I also would bet that we all at some point said, oh, why do I think of these kind of thoughts? Why do I fall into they sort spirals, get lost in it. And why do they trigger these heavy emotions such as anxiety and panic? So first of all, it's really important to understand that when you think these kind of thoughts, which may feel infiltrating or toxic to your head, you have to understand that you are not your thoughts. You identify with your thoughts and you identify yourself with the emotions that will be triggered by these thoughts. 
what happens to us is usually when when you think, for example, my partner will cheat on me or I will lose my job. What happens then is that this negative thought, wherever it comes from, however it's triggered, equals the negative emotion behind it. So you instantly, while you're identified with the thought, feel the fear coming up. You feel the panic coming up. And the emotion fills you up completely. So this is a really important concept to understand. So on the baseline, while you think a negative thought, which triggers a negative a negative and unfavorable emotion, you're instantly identified with it, which just opens the opportunity to fill you up. So if you would not be identified with that thought, if, if you would not identify with that emotion, then it would not fill you up. But as you're identified with it, it will fill you up. So to understand more what's actually happening here, I want to go with you more into depth here with negative thinking. And let's do some digging here. Where do negative thoughts actually come from? Because if you found the source of your negative thinking, then you can work on that source instead of just carrying the symptoms. I experienced a couple things here. You can also, if you're journaling, write down when negative thinking or especially negative thought patterns appear. At least for me, negative thoughts are more strongly in the evening, especially if you're a highly sensitive person. In the evening, you're probably more over aroused, you're exhausted, your central nervous system is definitely overloaded in the evening, cortisol levels might be high. So one thing you can always do to, in the first step, identify where negative thought patterns come from is creating a list of the triggers and situations and try to identify if you can see a red line or a pattern here, if you spectate that over time. So if I always feel negative thoughts in specific situations like in the evening or in specific trigger situations. For example, let's say you often feel like, oh, my partner might cheat on me for some reason. Then you might feel this negative thought when you are, for example, in a situation where your partner goes out alone or with his or her friends. So these might be trigger situations. I know some people would say that's absolutely clear where my negative thoughts appear, but for some people it might be not that clear where they appear. So that's the first step to definitely identify the specific situations. For me, it is often, as I said, more in the evening. So a great solution in the first hand is definitely to sleep over it. Another important concept to understand is that negative thoughts are usually the foundation of your emotional and therefore also physiological state. That means that when a negative thought appears and it instantly triggers an unfavorable emotion, then it will influence your physiological state because it can push you into a traumatic event let's say you experience childhood trauma, it will push you maybe in this dissociated, so in this separated state of your personality. It might also activate your sympathetic nervous system, so it can cause a fight, flight or freeze response in you. So it's really important to understand how these thoughts can influence your physiological state. But also, and that's important for later on, if we take positive thoughts, in the end, that's also interesting, like all thoughts 
are neither positive or negative. They're just thoughts, but we categorize them in groups as we sense more favorable or more unfavorable emotions in the end. But thoughts are just neutral. But same for favorable emotions, favorable thoughts, like the good thoughts, the positive thoughts, they also, of course, influence our physiological state, but obviously in a more positive way. And as I said, negative thoughts do not appear out of nothing. They normally are triggered by specific scenarios. So usually those scenarios are, for example, childhood trauma or other traumatic experiences. Negative thoughts can come out of those. They can also be triggered by themselves. So let's say you're in a negative thought spiral. So you think, for example, I will lose my job. Then it goes on. I will be homeless. I won't have any money. I can't pay my bills. And it's going on and on and on. So one, it's like a cascade. One thought triggers another. They can also be triggered, of course, by everyday life situations. For example, if something in the real world happens. And we have to also see that these are two different things. On the one hand, we have reality, how it appears to us. Let's say your boss actually fires you, like you're gone, that was it, you lost your job. That's a real world scenario. But on the other hand, it can also be that you are in your head, imagine that your boss might fire you, but it actually never would happen. But what's interesting here is that the brain cannot identify which scenario is the real one, because for the brain, the imaginational scenario might feel as real as the real scenario. Let's deep dive into how a negative thought pattern actually works and how you can reveal it. This exercise I have from Bettina Lohr, who's a psychologist I met at university. I think it's still really helpful to use to identify clear thought patterns and also in the next step replace them with more positive thought patterns. So first of all, we have a trigger and I want to use an example here. Let's say we talk about the thought pattern, my partner will leave me. So there could be different triggers involved in that scenario and you might observe yourself operating in different scenarios. So maybe you have this kind of trigger, maybe you experience this kind of thought pattern from time to time, maybe you don't. It's just an example. So we have different triggers that can appear here in that scenario. Can be others for you as well. So it's just an example for you to understand how a thought pattern works. But a trigger can be your partner says something like, my love, I'm quite overwhelmed by work today, so I won't spend time tonight with you, even if you would love to. I need some time on my own this evening. In that situation, thought and beliefs might trigger it in your head. So that can be something like, he or she doesn't want to see me. My partner doesn't love me. I am not good enough. I'm too much for him or her. He or she will leave me. He or she doesn't want me. When you think these kind of thoughts, when you have this kind of belief, as I said before, they equal a specific set of feelings here. For example, frustration, you would sense sadness. That hurts. Could be anger as well. Or anxiety, my partner will leave me. Could be powerlessness. I can't do anything. I'm out of my control. Could be weakness, you feel weak. 
my partner doesn't want me, could also cause panic. I will be alone forever. And these feelings will cause a reaction in you. So you might be reactive in that situation. And if you are trapped in an unfavorable thought pattern here, this action might look like, for example, overthinking, falling into negative thought spirals in your head that goes on and on. For example, he or she doesn't want to spend time with me. He or she doesn't love me. I will be alone. I will die alone. You could also fall into a more passively aggressive action here. You could also start ignoring him or her. So not being able to understand your partner's needs in that situation. You can take it personally, interpret it as he or she really doesn't want me. So I have to ignore him now to make him or her feel bad. You can also distance yourself in that situation. So you see that this kind of trigger, which caused negative thinking, which then caused an emotional reaction, causes different actions you can take here. So let's say you often tend to fall into this kind of thought pattern in this example that my partner will leave me kind of thought pattern. It might be helpful in the next step to identify this pattern as we did now in the first step and then replace it with a more favorable and future Brighton pattern, I would say, with really favorable thoughts, favorable emotions and favorable actions. So, Let's have a look. How could a positive thought pattern actually look like? The trigger is the same. So your partner says something like, my love, I'm quite overwhelmed by work today. So I won't spend tonight with you even if I would love to. I need some time on my own this evening. Your thought patterns, your beliefs, instead of the unfavorable you had before, now could be, oh, I see my love feels overwhelmed today. That he or she feels overwhelmed does not have to do anything with me. He or she loves me even if he or she needs time on his or her own. And that's a great opportunity to work on my inner thought patterns, if that's triggering me. Is there anything else I can do for my partner? Or does he or she just need some room, just some space for him or herself? If you have these kind of thoughts, instead of the unfavorables you had before, then you can definitely sense empathy. You can sense understanding and compassion. You might even sense some kind of excitement here because now you have time for other things you love because of course you love your partner but you also have your own life and you love your family you love maybe your children you love what you ever do in your free time you love you love doing sports playing an instrument you love working you love hiking you love writing reading whatever you love now you have more time doing that so it's a good thing. The action which results out of this emotion or this emotional experience, which is quite positive, which is super favorable, is that you're able to show tolerance and compassion to your partner instead of being passively aggressive and ignoring him or her or starting a fight with him or her. You can still ask, is there anything I can do for you, my love? Spending time with other people or activities you enjoy is also a great action you can now take instead of just distancing yourself without saying anything. If you now see yourself experiencing this or a similar pattern in your life again and again, you might also have tried 
this kind of positive replacement before. And you might say now, well, just telling myself positive beliefs and affirmations doesn't work. And I totally agree. If you just tell yourself, I'm free of anxiety, I'm happy, I'm positive, you're not actually believing this kind of things. You're not actually believing this kind of beliefs. So they won't manifest. So what does actually work to finally escape negative thought patterns, to stop negative thought spirals and to get into a more comfortable state again? I have to say that, of course, there are multiple techniques and I will present a couple now to you, but it is really a difficult thing, especially if you're a highly sensitive person. But I also would agree that probably everyone who experiences negative thinking, unfavorable thought spirals from time to time will struggle with that a lot. And it is not always working. As some days you're just filled up with negative emotions, you just don't know how to escape them. You have no idea how things might go on, how you could ever feel good again. And on these days, it is just helpful to go on with life. Just continue what you're doing. Focus on your daily routines again. Just accept that negative thoughts are with you today, that you experience them today. They are nothing bad. They may just hurt you. It's difficult to live with them. But today, they are just there. They are part of you today. And that's okay. That's okay. You can try to do different things to feel better. But if you do not feel better today, that's also okay. Because every emotion will pass by. Every negative thought will also pass by. They're like clouds in the sky forming. Sometimes they're big clouds. Sometimes they just disappear out of nothing. And there is a sunny, clear sky today. It's okay to have negative thoughts from time to time. It's also okay to get lost in negative thought spirals from time to time. It's nothing bad doing that. And it won't kill you either. That said, let's still have a look at positive techniques we can use here to resolve negative thought patterns and to feel better, to feel a sight of relief here again. The first technique I want to introduce to you is, I explained it before, changing your physiological state. Because when you experience negative thinking, and you experience unfavorable emotions, which are anxiety, even panic, powerlessness, then you are in a different physiological state as if you would be, as if you would sense a sense of calmness, happiness. You're feeling good. You're feeling comfortable. That's also caused by the activated nervous system. So, for example, when you feel panic, when you feel a loss of control caused by a negative thought, then you might activate your sympathetic nervous system, which creates a fight, flight, or freeze response in your body. Your goal can be in the first step to change your physiological state, to bring yourself in a better and clearer mood, and to calm down your whole nervous system, especially important for highly sensitive people here. When you are in a negative state, let's say you're in a state of anxiety, you're in a state of panic, you will definitely make bad decisions. You will feel a bit dissociated maybe, you feel a bit of being out of your body. So first things first, take action. Whatever you do, do anything. I experienced that it's really helpful to go on with life in that scenario. Do anything. Try to do anything to 
get out of that state of your central nervous system. And I talk to a lot of friends as well. I talk to therapists about that, to scientists about that. And there are different things you can do to change your physiological state. For example, you can take a power pose. That's something Tony Robbins always says, if you know him, like he's like a motivational speaker. He always says, do a power pose, place yourself like Superman does. And that changes your physiological state slightly as well. Then we can also breath calmly. With regulating our breath, we can also regulate our central nervous system, calm ourselves down. Just a couple deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. You could also go to sauna. I know many people who go to sauna when they feel bad. I do personally go for a walk pretty often. Some people might also meditate, like trying to get the control back over their thoughts. Other people might just want to sleep. Sleeping over negative thinking also works, especially when you experience negative thinking in the evening, when your nervous system is already pretty over aroused, then sleeping helps a lot to recover the whole system. Doing sports also might help. Of course, that is why many people do that as well. Eating, so emotional eating is definitely also a solution for many people. Many people consume sugar, fat um, and salty foods just to control their mood because it increases our levels of serotonin. It gives us a feeling of satisfaction. It's probably not a favorable solution for many of us because it causes overweight in a lot of people if they constantly tend to eat from emotional reasons. But it's definitely a thing people do to control their mood and to change their physiological state while being in a negative or depressive state. Of course, also calling to a friend, talking, walking and talking. Many people do that. I also do that a lot with friends, changes your physiological state. You can also, if you think like I might need help solving these kind of thoughts, look for a therapist. You don't even need to call a therapist in the end, but just taking action, creating a list of therapists might help you in the first hand. So there are many different things you can do to change your biophysiological state and that even pretty quickly. Then we have another technique, technique number two, which is using images and using your imagination. Imagine a moment where you felt extremely confident, where you feel extremely happy and positive. You can use this kind of imagination exercise, especially in specific situations. So let's, for example, take the example again. Your partner, my partner will leave me and there's actually no reason why he or she would leave you, but you still get triggered from time to time. So you might also had a conversation with him or her before. You might also have had great moments with your partner where you both felt really harmonious, where you both felt really good, really happy, really confident together. So you can take one of these moments and really go into it in your pure imagination to feel that good feeling from the past because your head, your brain will memorize it. So you can use also photos in these kind of scenarios. I do that a lot because I have a board where I like kind of a mood board where I put my patterns in I can also link you the episode up here. Three-step process to actually work on yourself and to set up a board, especially with images, 
helps me a lot to get back into more positive states. So if you have this kind of board, or if you just have a photo on your phone of that positive situation with your partner, it could also be at work. Let's say your negative thought might be, I will lose my job. Check out a picture of you in a really comfortable and confident situation where you were successful in your career life. So if you focus on this kind of moments, on this kind of images, then you will sense and feel how positive you actually felt in that situation. So it's really important to address your emotional state emotionally, not rationally. That's really important to understand. If you experience unfavorable thoughts from time to time and they trigger difficult emotions like anxiety, panic, wherever you feel, you have to address this kind of emotional experience on an emotional level as well. You cannot just talk yourself into, I want to feel positive today, I feel so happy. If you do not really feel it, that doesn't work. Then we go on with strategies from therapy, because there are also a couple one you can also have a look into. One thing is, which I found really helpful in the child work, if you feel like you can relate to that, that's definitely a good thing to do some research in. Inner child work is basically going back into different situations you experienced as a child. It can be difficult situations, can also be favorable situations where you felt really good. But the goal is to build self-worth by learning how to care for your child, especially if you experienced childhood trauma, if you experienced difficult moments in your childhood. What you can also do is to talk to that child. That's definitely a concept from therapy, which might be really helpful for many people. So talking to that part of your personality, which comes from the early years of your life, you can also send voice messages to your inner child to really speak to it, make it feel comfortable, telling him or her that he or she is safe, that he or she is secure today, that you will care for him or her. So this is helpful because a lot of negative thoughts come out of these kind of difficult childhood experiences. So in that scenario, you really work on your source of negative thoughts. You really work on difficult parts of your personality. Um, it's really important if you do that, that you have a look into some research before. It might also be helpful to do these kind of exercises with professional guidance from a therapist, from a coach or from a counselor. Another exercise from the therapeutic context is of course also writing. So writing a journal is a thing many therapists already recommended to me and I did that myself for a couple of years now. So that's really helpful to clarify your inner world. One thing you can also do when you have occasionally coming up unfavorable thoughts is zooming out and making them pretty tiny. So for example, a thought come up, I will lose my job. Then you just shrink it down and push it away. Oh yeah, there it is again. Okay, I might lose my job. Oh, okay, it's gone. So that's also a tiny technique to get rid of negative thoughts which come up occasionally. But what to do when you catastrophize negative emotions like panic, powerlessness, and anxiety. What will you do if they fill you up completely 
and if you lose control over your emotions. I think that is also the worst case scenario many people, including me, have in their minds when negative thoughts appear. Will I ever get rid of them again? Will they ever pass? Will I ever feel good again? So what you do when you catastrophize is obviously you continuously think about the worst case scenario, which can be, I will lose my job for sure. My partner will cheat on me someday for sure. And that causes panic because that means that you will end up homeless or that you will be alone and no one will ever love you again. So just saying that sounds absolutely stupid. If you rationally think about that, that sounds stupid. But the emotional reality looks quite different. So it seems so real when you catastrophize these things and sense them pretty precisely. If you are filled up with negative emotions and you think, what if I lose control of the overwhelming feelings and die in a panic attack? What then? What now? First of all, sounds so stupid, but accept the current state and go on. Yeah. If you lose your mind, go on. If you think you might die in a panic attack, go on. Because life will go on anyway. And that's really difficult to see in that situation because you would never expect that to happen because you feel like you're going to die in that panic attack. But life will go on. One thing is for sure that if you catastrophize, you will make it out even if you do not believe it right now. And I know that in that situation, when you see yourself operating in panic, there is no way you believe that life will go on and that you will feel better at some point. But Reality is that life always goes on, so try to go on with it in that scenario. That's the first thing to do. And I know, I know that for myself that when panic comes up, when difficult feelings, emotions come up, and you think like you're, dr you're drowning in them, you don't see the light in the end of the tunnel. You don't see that emotions will pass by and you don't see that life will go on in a more comfortable way. But reality is that if you're drowning in strong emotions, if you feel panic, they won't last forever. So always keep that in mind. Emotions are endurable and emotions will pass by. It's like clouds. Sometimes there is a storm going on, but the storm will also pass. However, how strong it is. One physical law we should also talk now in the end about is that energy always follows attention. When you change your physical state and then focus on a more positive future, and if you stick to that thought, then your energy will follow that attention. In fact, you're in control of your emotions and of your life at any given time, even if it doesn't feel like it sometimes, but you are. Because you can and you will find a solution for your current crisis and negative thoughts caused by it. If you're listening to this right now, I'm very sure that you will find a solution because I see that you're alive, you're listening, and you managed so many other things before, and that's great. And if you're in a rock bottom moment right now, and you're really feeling that you cannot cope with it on your own, there's always the possibility to seek professional help, to work with a therapist. If you have not, if you thought about working with a therapist, I will also link you the episode I recorded with my long-term friend, Annie right here, where we talked about 
how we found our therapist, how working with a therapist actually looked like and how it changed our lives to the better. Professional therapy and coaching can therefore especially help highly sensitive people, but also, of course, everyone else who's struggling with negative thinking, with depressive states from time to time. So definitely make sure to check out this episode. Also, I'm pretty curious what you do if you experience negative thinking from time to time, because I'm 100% sure I did not cover everything on the topic in this episode, because there is so much to say. So if you have any experiences, tricks or solutions, make sure to comment below this episode and share them with our community. Also subscribe to the podcast here on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen. Make sure to check out the book list in the description and I see and speak to you in the next episode.